You might be asking why I'm getting a jacket on when it's about 100 degrees out. You'll find out here in one second. Well, it sure looks like there's a mud dauber who made a nest in our gloves. My dad always told me that you wanted to get all the spiders and everything out of these gloves before you put them on. Lots of brown recluses around here. Glad I didn't just stick my hand inside there before we found that out. It's time to check on those bees. We haven't taken a look at them in about, I would say a month or so. I need to take and uh, see if one of those uh, hives is moving up into the second box and to see if they need any adjusting or anything like that. And then I wanna see if that one hive that uh, that buddy of mine gave me, if they are surviving and building comb well. So, got a smoker uh, today. We'll see if we can light this up and see how those bees are. After that, we'll check on buffalo and see what else we can get done today. You're supposed to be able to use burlap or various different things in these, but a good friend of mine said you can just use hay or straw so we're gonna try some hay today and see how well it burns should be exactly what we need let's find out Looks like uh, they're filling out the center like they should. They say they're supposed to fill out the center all the way out. And you can see here that all this center is honey, honey, honey. And it looks like they're starting to fill these ones out. And the same thing on this side. Looks like they're starting to fill the outsides but we're not quite there yet so what we'll do is we'll monitor as they fill this out we'll add on another brood box but it looks like everything is looking like it should really really good looking man it's just a beautiful beautiful sight all these bees if you notice what they're doing is they're all not all, but a lot of them are eating honey. And the reason for that is, is when you smoke them, they, uh, it kind of tricks them. So they think that their hive is on fire. So they go into this preservation mode to where they eat honey as much as they can, and then they will fly off in anticipation that their hive is going to burn up, which it's not. Uh, but that's actually what calms them down, not, uh, doesn't actually calm them down by smoking them. It makes them preoccupied. Really, really cool. Well, I wish I could say the same for this second hive. This is the one that got left on the property that uh, we bought. Doesn't look like it made it. Not sure why, because there were gobs and gobs and gobs of bees before we put this second box on. This box has been here for a long time, just by itself and all the bees. And now, after I put this box on, not 
right after, but a couple months and all the bees are gone. There's tons of different larvae in there, wax moths, all sorts of things. I'm gonna have to get with my friend and find out what he thought the cause was, but there's nothing left. As you can see, just a pile of uh, different various bugs, old wax, little larva you see down in there. I think those are moths, but no bees. That's a bummer because I thought this was a really strong hive. They never even got up to the second box to fill it up. I don't think at all. No, they sure didn't. So we will uh, reset with this. I'll find out what I need to do with this. We need to clean it out or somehow get rid of those moths. Those are going to be a nuisance. Probably going to have to smoke it or do something with those. And then uh, restart probably next year with these. So now we're back down to one hive. You definitely win some, you lose some. That's a bummer. Because a whole hive takes a little while to get set up. I don't know. There was a lot of wax moths in there and I'm not sure if that can kill a hive or uh, if they come afterwards. Like I said before, this is just, just getting started with this whole beekeeping thing. Really don't know what I'm doing, to be honest. So some of you guys might leave a comment in uh, this video and tell me what you guys think, what went wrong. Um, one thing I did notice was that there was a lot of bees on the outside on a really hot day. I don't know if maybe it got too hot for them. Um, and maybe they died and then the moths came in after that, but there weren't just moths or some other bugs. So I don't know. We'll see. The smoker definitely worked out pretty good. They were a lot more calm than last time I worked with them. So that's nice. We'll definitely use that for next time. I don't know if you can hear or not, but there's a little kitten running around here little uh, female cat that was in the mix of all those kittens. Uh, I just heard her again. There she is, somewhere in there. No? This barn echoes. She's on this side. Where are you at, kitty? Anyway, she's one of those uh, kittens that got left from... Uh, the guy who I bought this from. So she, uh, she stuck around and she survived really well. So I told my daughter, if she can tame her down, then we'll keep her. And so far, I think she's been able to uh, come up to her and pet her. So I think she'll probably stick around. We'll have another barn cat. So if you guys haven't noticed already, we started a second channel and that's called uh, Buffalo Country Life, we called it. And some of you guys have asked, uh, why start a second channel? Well, that's fair enough. Um, main reason, just to be honest, is because it's similar, but different content than this channel. Uh, I really wanted to experiment with a sights and sounds only type of video. And you might've seen before that we have done that from time to time, I've put out maybe four or five different videos that are sights and sounds only. And I really wanted to kind of separate it from the uh, everyday uh, videos that we put out or, every, or weekly videos that we put out on this channel. So we started another channel and that's just de devoted to sights and sounds, kind of featuring Heidi actually uh, in her cooking. We're doing a lot of outdoor cooking and it's kind of fun. Um, just doing some experimenting and we're really enjoying it. I, I really like it. So I'll leave a link in the description below. Like I said, it's called Buffalo Country Life. Check it out and if you like it, subscribe and share it with your friends. We'd appreciate it. But if you are not into that type of thing, no problem because all the content on this channel is staying the same.
buffalo are out in the middle of the field tonight. It is rut season, so you can't see them from here, but coyote is covered in mud, and that's typically what they do this time of year, the bulls anyways. They like to cover themselves in mud and uh, show off for the ladies. Looks like we got a broken insulator down here at the bottom. This was kind of an experiment to see how well these insulators pulled around this post and it looks like it pulled a little too tight. So we'll come back, make a note of those. We'll come back, replace those, maybe loosen this wire here up just a smidge. I really uh, am personally kind of attracted to the videos that have a little less drama. Uh, I know that we tend to um, try to get clicks or views by making more drama, but in a nutshell, Buffalo really, there isn't a whole lot of drama with them. They are a really easy animal to raise. They're an animal that are just they're just really docile, um, but unfortunately, what you see of buffalo a lot of times is, you know, those times that are in Yellowstone where people are unfortunately getting injured or killed, and that's kind of what puts the limelight on buffalo. Um, and so I wanted to kind of make a content that was a little less dramatic or no drama at all, uh, but just peaceful. And so that's kind of where the uh, buffalo country life channel came from so we'll see where it goes see if you guys are interested and if it goes somewhere we'll keep going and if not no harm no foul we gave it a shot this is a pool that comes out of this pond there's actually a valve down underneath here that we can turn on and fill this up but it's been a little dry this year unfortunately uh, nothing crazy, but that pool on the other side that we had dug out that was wet all year long last year this time has dried up and it's been dry for a week to two weeks already. Um, so this is kind of what's left and it looks like it's starting to dry up too. So we may, may need to uh, turn this valve on and eventually we'll get a different setup to where we'll have a trough that comes out here where they won't be able to climb inside of it and make it, make it all muddy. But you know how everything goes, all time and money, right? Yeah, it's been a little dry this year, but nothing like what some of these other guys have seen in like Western Kansas and the Dakotas, they've seen some extreme droughts. We are fortunate to have grass. And luckily we did get this field done um, this summer. So they have been on this and they've eaten it down a little bit in certain spots, but for the most part, I would say it's done pretty well. Uh, they've got plenty of grass. And the goal is to get the other side of the fence, the rest of the property to finish off the 80 acres, um, hopefully this winter or by next spring. I would love to have that other side over there done this winter. That way they can co go over there and feed and the hay that we give them would just be a supplement. That would be nice. One way to tell if they're doing well, which is kind of interesting, is their patties should look something like this and when you spread it out, it should spread out nice and even. It shouldn't look too wet or sloppy and it shouldn't be too hard because if it's too hard, it means they're getting a lot of fiber and not much else. And if it's too wet and sloppy, that could mean too much protein or other issues also, worms, various other things. Kind of gross, I guess you could say, but that is a really good indication as to how healthy your buffalo are out in the field. But they look like they're doing really well. Like I said, this is uh, rut right now. This is prime rut, like July, August is prime rut for them. And you can tell Coyote is in prime rut by his actions. This time of year is not a time 
that you really want to be uh, toying around with them. They are kind of like a bear, you know, a bear and its cubs. Certain instances, you want to be careful of them. And this time is one of those instances. Unfortunately, not everybody respects their distance or respects the way buffalo are. There was a tragedy out in Kansas I heard about about a week ago, and it was sad, but um, somebody lost their life actually by one of these animals. And I don't know the full story, so I won't get into the details that I heard because I don't want to spread something that I don't know exactly. But um, you really have to respect the animal and hand feeding and getting close to them and things like that. You kind of have to do it at your own risk, really, because they can turn on a dime. The way I always took them was they're kind of like a tiger. You know, you can tame them down to a point, but beyond that, um, they can flip a, flip a switch and it's not their fault. It's just because they are a wild animal. They are not domesticated and that's why I love them. But you have to respect them for that reason. And so you gotta be careful around them. The uh, hand feeding that I do, to be honest, is very, very, very minimal. And I don't honestly even like it. Um, I do it just because I've been around buffalo enough and I've done it to a couple of the animals, but beyond that, I really try not to do it very much. Um, last time I have hand fed my buffalo has been probably, oh, three, four months ago. So it doesn't happen very often. The reason why you don't wanna do it very often uh, or do it at all for some people is because when that animal is expecting to be hand fed or expecting um, you to be interacting with them close, let's say. And let's say you come out there one day and you don't have feed or your bucket runs out. They get a little agitated, you know? A thousand, 2000 pound animal getting agitated with a human that's 150 pounds doesn't end up well. And so it, can get dangerous even if they're fred friendly. Well, my mower belt finally came in. Let's see if we can stick that on. Having these two properties is both a blessing and a curse. Seems like everything that you need is at one property and then you move it over there and whenever you need it over there, you need it back. But I would rather it this way than the other. I want to come check on the peaches to see if we have anything on here and yep that's what I thought. This was loaded down with peaches and there was some that were almost ripe, almost. And unfortunately the animals got to them first. They can smell those things way better than we can apparently every single one that is crazy i think the coons are to blame mostly but every single one looks like is gone <laughs> well somebody got a good meal that's for sure you can see even the pond is low we've had so much of a dry spell you can see how far down from that spill pipe it is, it's down, man, almost three feet from where it should be. But it's still got water in it, which is good. I think what I would like to do, uh, this thing is not as deep as what it was sold to me as, of course. But I think what I'd like to do is maybe one of these winters, probably not this winter, I think I got too much going on, but I'd like to get a big machine in here, drain it, and then dredge it out as deep as I can. And so we can hold two to three times more water than what's in it now. That would be really, really nice. And so we'll plan on doing that here in the next couple winters. I made this a couple weeks ago. This was kind of fun. 
I took a uh, piece of grounding rod. So it's steel on the inside, but then it's copper on the outside. Turned it into a dinner bell and it's starting to oxidize and turn green there, which I think is really cool. I like it. Took some leather, strapped it on there. It rings pretty nice. I actually made a video about it on our second channel. You'll have to check it out. That mower blew a belt again. So I went up to the shop to see if they could get me another one. And unfortunately they couldn't find the one that I ordered the first time. So got this one on Amazon and it's gonna be a trial by error because we can't find the schematics for what belt we actually need, unfortunately. So I got a 90 inch, I think. We'll see if a 90 inch works. And if it doesn't, I'll have an extra 90 and then we'll see if an 89 works. You know, there's something that um, I've kind of been holding back on this channel and I really want to change that. It's really easy to look at what everybody else is doing and just try to copy that. And you know what? A lot of times that's not really true to us. It's not true to me anyway. If I was honest with myself, I would say that from time to time, I've made videos that have been a little too clickbaity, quite frankly. And sometimes you think that that's the way to get ahead, but that's not really who I am. And I don't really like drama, to be 100% honest. I like being able to do a task and everything works out fine. That's kind of how I was raised. That's the way my grandparents raised me. That's the way my parents raised me. So I think I'm gonna go back to that. There's been a couple of videos, not everything, but there's been a couple of videos that, honestly, I look back at them and, ah, I don't really care for them. They're too, too dramatized. And so you'll see a little bit different content out of me from this channel. And also I would say that in a general sense, I haven't spoken my mind on some subjects uh, that I really regret that I have. Um, there are some things like farming practices that I think I want to speak up a little bit more about and some things of how people raise buffalo that I disagree on. Um, and so you'll hear a little bit more of my opinion on some of those things also. Well, I think it might work but it's not the right size. It's a little too loose. I think it might hold me over until I get the right size though. So let's try it out. Well, it started up that first time, but it doesn't want to start up again because this belt is too loose when it's disengaged and wants to throw it, but then when you tighten it up, it's too tight for uh, the mower to turn over. <coughs> so we'll order another belt. Might be able to get it started and run it that way, but probably not even worth it. We'll get another belt and then I think about one inch shorter should do the trick. I find it funny that when you aren't true to who you are and you don't speak your mind, you know, obviously there's sometimes that you need to close your mouth. And, uh, but there's other times that I think that you should speak your mind. And it's funny how when you don't speak your mind and you're not true to who you are, it never feels right. And I think that's kind of how I felt lately that I've held back talking about certain things um, like the way we grow our food that's a, like the way um, buffalo are perceived in uh, some of social media that I don't really like and I don't really want to be involved in some of it honestly and I want to make sure that I'm open with my opinions I don't mean to speak too vague 
in a nutshell, what I'm really talking about is bison handling, uh, I guess you could say buffalo handling, and also some farming practices that I think aren't sustainable. I think uh, regenerative agriculture, holistic management, things like that are really what we need to be focusing on for um, the near future and also a longer term aspect for our kids, for our grandkids. So you're gonna hear a little bit more uh, about that from me and you're gonna hear my opinion on some of today's farming, I guess you could say. So I, I think you'll enjoy it. Well, I think that's it for us for tonight. Got a few things done. Always never as much as what I wanted, but we got tomorrow always. So check out our other channel if you get a chance, guys. It's called Buffalo Country Life. If you're looking for something that is just no drama, just peaceful um, country life. Heidi's doing some outdoor cooking on that channel. It's a lot of fun. We'll see you guys next time.